Well, thank you, Kevin, and thank, uh, thank you to every panelist uh, for our um, innovative business panel. Uh, it's now my pleasure to invite to the stage one of the special guests who's joined us today, the Minister of State for Science and Technology and Member of Parliament for Cambridge, North Dumfries, the Honourable Gary Goodyear. Minister Goodyear has been a fixture here in the Kitchener-Waterloo-Cambridge region, uh, region for many years, and for those of us who are in the region know very well, has been a very good friend of the Perimeter Institute. As Minister, he is at the forefront of the federal government's ongoing effort to increase uh, Canada's focus on the importance of innovation. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Minister Goodyear. Well, thank you, Graham, for that introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm quite encouraged by the discussions we've had at the panels. Uh, today, uh, there has been a number of articles written over the years on uh, Canada's productivity, and it certainly is an issue that our government is seized with. I should, uh, before I start, uh, just thank the BMO and the Policy Options Magazine and, of course, the Perimeter Institute for hosting this event. I would also like to give my sincere congratulations at the launching of the Sir Isaac Newton Chair. This is indeed a game changer for our nation. It will bring even more respect at the prowess of our science and technology community. And my sincere congratulations to Dr. Wen. And I know Mike uh, Lazaridis uh, should be congratulated for his visionary imagination. And I'm not sure if you've been at private functions with Mike, but he often wears a tie that lights up. So I would like to thank him for his uh, support of the uh, stand-up comedy sector in Canada as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that uh, from Minister Flaherty's talk, and certainly if I can do anything to add to it, I would add uh, the absolute fact that our government uh, recognizes probably more so than any part of our history the, the importance of science, technology, and innovation uh, in building an economy not just in getting us out of an economic downturn that we've faced in recent years, but actually in building the economy of tomorrow. In fact, uh, many of you will know that Prime Minister Stephen Harper launched our nation's science and technology strategy in 2007, uh, prior to the, the worst part of the economic downturn. Now, the strategy was designed to encourage a stronger private sector commitment uh, to science, technology, and innovation and build on Canada's existing research strengths and, of course, to attract uh, and retain as well as develop highly skilled scientists and researchers. Since the strategy was launched, um, our government has committed record amounts of funding and investments into the science and technology sector. Now, uh, Minister Flaherty is a heck of a lot tougher than he looks. It hasn't always been easy. But I can uh, tell you and congratulate Minister Flaherty for his vision. At every single opportunity that our government has had, we have increased our investments, uh, indeed every single budget. And they are strategically placed uh, investments, not just money uh, put around. They are, in fact, uh, put toward areas that we have analyzed to be uh, areas that the nation faces in terms of a challenge. But all of that said, we uh, obviously face uh, some other important challenges. In spite of our many achievements, um, productivity continues to lag and has been mentioned today many times. This is not a new problem for Canada. It is something that is decades old. We have had many reports, uh, research done on this issue, many opinions from our own country and around the world. But what is most concerning uh, is the lowering amount of business uh, spending on research and development. Put simply, I think we are at a turning point in our nation's economics, and that is that the private sector must begin to prioritize its innovation capacity and better integrate such things into its own business strategies. Basically, I have said in the past that businesses have to get into the game. The federal government has the uniforms on. We are tweaking them a little bit. We are all warmed up. We are on the field. Uh, we do, in fact, need the business sector to get on the field and enjoy a good game. Uh, we want this to happen, of course. It's very obvious that when businesses do invest in research and development, they, uh, they produce products and services that will lead not just to a better quality of life for Canadians, and when we can sell them to the world, we create jobs here, 
and create a better quality of life to people around the world. This is exactly where our high-paying, high-valued, longer-lasting uh, jobs of the future will come from. Not to mention that uh, if businesses are actually doing the same thing that they did five years ago, making the same product the same way out of the same material, they are in significant trouble in my view and they may or may not already know it. Now, despite the incredible amount of incentives that the federal government provides for businesses to engage in R&D, and we recognize that most small and medium-sized businesses don't have on-site laboratories, that's why we have programs to collaborate and create partnerships with our universities and colleges. And as we've identified these problems, they don't buy, as uh, Bill Curry mentioned, they don't buy as many computers per dollar as our United States counterparts. So, Minister Flaherty comes out with a 100% capital cost allowance. But the numbers are still not changing. So clearly we have challenges that go far beyond our current set of incentives for businesses. And that's exactly why we launched the R&D panel review uh, last October. We need to see uh, and we need advice on what is uh, happening with our current uh, suite of programs? Why are they not working as well as they should? What do we need to do to maximize the results for Canadians as we go forward? So on that, I would like to acknowledge Tom Jenkins, who's here with us, and you'll hear from him in a minute, uh, who is the chairman of that panel. And Nabina Robinson, I saw her somewhere in here. Uh, Nabina, there's Nabina up there, who is also one of the panel members. I can assure you from the reports I've had so far, this panel has worked extremely hard. They have uh, spoken to literally hundreds of stakeholders, businesses. They've spoken to literally all of our provincial counterparts, uh, territorial counterparts, uh, across the nation, indeed around the world. Um, I expect their report to be in uh, October 18th. Uh, as some have said in a few weeks, uh, Tom is again laughing, so indeed that is a good thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the federal government has, through its stimulus package, taken an opportunity to not just create jobs today, when the nation needed them the most. Uh, programs such as the Knowledge Infrastructure Program that my uh, friend Minister Flaherty mentioned, this was a $2 billion federal program, turned out to be over $5 billion that went toward rebuilding the research capacity at our colleges and universities. But then we did more than just that. We put three quarters of a billion dollars into the Canadian Foundation for Innovation to provide state-of-the-art uh, world-leading equipment to those new laboratories, rebuilt laboratories. But we did more than that. We advanced our Vanier scholarships. We just launched our Banting postdoctoral fellowships. We've increased our Canada research chairs, our Canada Excellence research chairs, to make sure that we have the brightest and best minds the world has to offer practicing on that equipment in our institutions. And I'm very pleased to say, ladies and gentlemen, that we are currently experience a brain, experiencing a brain gain and proof of that you saw today with Dr. Wen. But it is indeed from countries all around the world, from Belgium to Germany to the United Kingdom. Indeed, the United Kingdom has written articles on how Canada is stealing some of their brightest scientists. I'm very pleased by that article. This uh, change that we are undergoing, a paradigm shift, if you will, is going to take more than government policy. It is indeed going to take uh, scientists uh, perhaps learning a little bit more about business. It's going to take businesses in Canada respecting the value of science, research and development to improve their bottom line and continue them in the capacity. Indeed, I believe that it is going to take all levels of government in all areas of Canada. It's going to take our scientists, our business leaders, even our teachers. Uh, how they teach, what they teach at all levels of education to change a behavioral pattern that our nation faces. But I'm encouraged very much so by the discussions we've heard today, by the panel members. Clearly we have the uh, solution before us. We need to put that to work. I can assure you again that the federal government is working at every level on every angle that we can think of and indeed we look forward to working with you, not necessarily working harder, but working smarter, as is the true definition of productivity. Thank you very much for this afternoon. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too.